Hello, um, welcome to my channel. Um, I'm Gavin Boiter and I am um, embarked on this crazy project to write a, a thousand word story every single day, um, which is based on five words chosen randomly by an online um, random word generator. Um, it's on uh, textfixer.com. It's very helpful. Uh, so the words that I have based my story on today are the following. And uh, this one is called Beeswax. <coughs> Captain Montgomery Fitch, retired, finished pouring pine needles into the bee smoker and switched off the television. He'd been disheartened to hear the lockdown was due to end. Bojo and his government cronies were itching to open the country up again, lest a fatal economic downturn prove their undoing. Why this was bad news for Monty Fitch involves a little unpacking. Although he had attained the rank of captain in the Royal Navy, Fitch had worked largely in logistics and procurement, dealing with as few people as humanly possible. He'd never been a people person, to use that nauseating phrase. Fitch was an introvert, an only child content to live in, in his imagination, who'd made few friends and at 77 was unlikely to make any more. In this time of social distancing, being an introvert was a little like having superpower. While others tore their hair out in boredom, Fitch walked his dogs, read, played the clarinet, tended his hives, and was content. Fitch dropped some lit tinder into the metal canister, blowing gently until the twigs caught. The twigs and needles should smoke nicely, and the sweet fragrance should prove soporific for the bees. He donned his overall and gloves and ventured into the warm May afternoon. Fitch walked through three acres of wildflowers painstakingly nurtured. The hives stood at the bottom of the garden by the hawthorn hedge. Beyond that lay a barn conversion that he'd heard a young couple were about to move into. Maddie, a busybody in the local fishmongers, insisted on filling him in on such gossip. His petty revenge was to call her Madeline, as he had done for 27 years. The hives were now three tiers high. He'd add one Whenever the lair below became full, the comb's hexagonal cells waxed over by the worker bees. He would inspect the honeycombs and the hive's colonies. In particular, he had to make sure the queens were in good health. As grey-blue coils of smoke drifted up through the hives, a voice penetrated the hum of patrolling insects. Apiculture, eh? A young man was peering over the hedge. Had he climbed the ladder for that express purpose? No. The newcomer held shears and was levelling the top of the hawthorn. Fitch could ignore him, but he wasn't a rude person by nature. He just didn't require the chatter upon which most people seem to thrive. That's right, said Fitch. Bit of a dumb question, said the man, who extended a hand and then retracted it. Oops, keep forgetting, grinned the neighbour. I'm Frank. Fitch sighed. It seemed he wasn't going to be left in peace. Monty Fitch, he replied, you might want to stand back. Frank shook his head, I'm not afraid of bees. Wasps, that's another thing entirely. Here came the cliche about bees stinging less frequently because they generally die, whereas wasps are serial stingers. I'm avoiding working on my novel. I'm a crime writer. Frank Latimer? I mostly read books about beekeeping and naval history. Perhaps boring his neighbour off the ladder might work. Frank seemed oblivious. I'm completely blocked. I need a way a perfectionist serial killer can be caught out. The cops are trying to find his secret torture den, but he's a neat freak with an enormous IQ. He's always one step ahead. I'm afraid I've painted myself into a corner. Fitch wondered how long Frank would go on talking if he just went about his business, but his neighbour seemed to be waiting some input. A thorny predicament. I'd better get on, Frank nodded sheepishly. Oh, sorry, of course. I must get back indoors and wrestle with my killer. Lovely to meet you. Likewise, said Fitch, staring at Frank's outstretched hand. Frank slapped himself on the forehead. I'm such a dummy. Until next time. Looking forward. Fitch lied. The inspection went well. 
the workers were plentiful and fully engaged. One thing Fitch admired most about bees was how compartmentalised and efficient they were. They had multiple special glands. Hypopharyngeal glands produce royal jelly to feed the larval brood and enzymes to break down sugars. Another gland produced wax. And of course, bees had venom glands to repel invaders. He hadn't always been alone. There had been Mary, the golden-haired secretary who won his heart with amusing little margin notes she scribbled on his memos. Eventually, those notes contained little hearts and kisses. It had taken him far too long to, to take her out, but only four months of stepping out before he asked her to marry him. Mary had been the only person he could stand to spend more than half an hour with, and they had enjoyed 51 years together before the leukaemia. They'd never had children, he couldn't, and she, remarkably, accepted that. That night, as he lay in bed reminiscing, Fitch had a sudden brainwave. He leapt out of bed, headed to the pantry, and retrieved a jar of honey. He attached a note to the jar with an elastic band and crept out of the house. Fitch hoped that at 2am during lockdown, nobody would see him sneaking around in his dressing gown. There was an upstairs light on in the renovated barn. He considered turning back, but something stopped him. This small gesture seemed important. Mary would have loved it. He quietly let himself into the Latimer's backyard and left the honeypot on their patio. The note contained only one word, melissopalinology. Melissopalinology was the analysis of the pollen content in honey. A clever scientist could identify the pollen grains and their relative distribution, and perhaps even conjecture where that particular combination of flowers might be found. Say, for instance, in the meadows surrounding a killer's secret lair. Frank was delighted, as Fitch had known he would be. When Fitch took his dogs for a walk the following morning, he found something had been left for him. A thick novel entitled Shadow Boxers by Frank Latimer. It was inscribed simply, To Captain Fitch, with eternal gratitude, Frank. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that, uh, with its uh, small nod to the current situation. Um, if you did, I would very much appreciate if you would uh, like it, share it, maybe even subscribe. Um, I'm trying to build up the uh, impact of my YouTube channel, which is a fine and secretive art. But um, if you would do that, I'd be really grateful. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.